Auroras and more specifically, the northern lights have been making some pretty big headlines in recent months with some increased solar activity leading to more sightings across a wider swath of the United States, even in the mountains near Asheville as recently as about a month to a month and a half ago. But what makes the auroras work and more specifically, what makes them turn the different colors that we often see when they shimmer across the skies? Well, it all starts with what's known as the solar wind, these charged particles that are emitted by the sun out into space. When those particles encounter the magnetic field around our planet, it's essentially kind of a planetary shield, if you will. Those particles receive an electric charge and they follow the lines of the magnetic field. They often tend to then congregate around the north and south pole of the planet following the magnetic magnetic field and that electric charge that the particles eventually receive in our Earth's magnetic field cause them to begin to glow. And the color specifically comes down to exactly what kind of molecules we're dealing with here. If we have oxygen molecules coming down from the uh, sun and being energized by the magnetic field, that will tend to lead more to the red colors that we see in an aurora. Blue auroras are often the result of nitrogen molecules uh, being energized in Earth's magnetic field. Green comes also from oxygen molecules, so it seems oxygen can kind of go one way or the other. And when we see the pink auroras, that's back to nitrogen again. So oxygen, nitrogen, they're kind of the main focus of what leads to the different aurora colors that we have out there. And a quick way for you to think about it is it's not all that dissimilar to neon lighting. Neon lighting gets its color from a specific kind of molecule being pumped into a glass tube and then being given an electric field. So an aurora is just kind of a natural version, if you will, of some neon lighting.